today on Building the Open Metaverse. It's been interesting observing this generation. And as soon as I, you know, started to see what, you know, these guys are doing with their online uh, environments and their, their notes, I said online environments, like not online games, it's truly online environments. I started to actually complain, you know, why us adults, professionals, were using Zoom and Google Docs and PowerPoints to collaborate. When I see my kids, you know, having almost, you know, real life interactive experiences with their friends online in worlds that they build. So, uh, journey to the metaverse, you said, Patrick, I think it's... Uh, <laughs> It's like Rome. All roads lead to Rome. All roads lead to the metaverse. Welcome to Building the Open Metaverse, where technology experts discuss how the community is building the open metaverse together. Hosted by Patrick Cozy from Cesium and Mark Petit from Epic Games. Hello and welcome to our show, Building the Open Metaverse, the podcast where technologists share their insights on how the community is building the metaverse together. Today, our guest is Nadine Alame, the CEO of the Open Geospatial Consortium. Nadine, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Mark, for having me. And of course, I'm with my co-host, Patrick Kodzi. Patrick, how are you today? Doing great, Mark. So, Nadine, it's an honor to have you on the podcast today. You know, I'm a big fan of your work and the work of the OGC community. Uh, to kick things off, we would love to hear a bit about your personal journey to the metaverse. I'm very happy to be here, Patrick. Uh, um, I'm a fan back at you, uh, and I think everybody knows that. Why, thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, the, the journey to the metaverse, um, I have to say I had to listen to the previous three podcasts that you recorded to get a hint of what, exactly what what is the metaverse. And when we talk about a journey, it's like, it's like are we there yet? Where are we on this journey? So it, that's a difficult question. But philosophy aside, right? Um, I may not know exactly what the metaverse is, but I do know that it has to do with this uh, virtual platform, uh, some sort of sh shared virtual platform, right? Fully immersive platform that looks like the real world, uh, that we can access it in different ways, and that there's this this concept of crossing between the virtual and the real world, so the physical world. And I also know um, that the metaverse is becoming a reality uh, because, uh, well, my kids talk about it all the time. We've seen the Facebook. Uh, so it's really now, you know, mass market, right? But also f as a professional, I know um, uh We've got advanced mapping, uh, advanced 3D computing. We have the AR, the VR, the simulation capabilities. So from that context, if all of this you know, stuff um, is the metaverse, I, my journey is actually from two different places that converge. One of them is the geospatial angle. So Mark mentioned the Open Geospatial Consortium. And I'll, I'll tell you more about it later, but... From the geospatial angle, having been in geospatial since I uh, stumbled upon geospatial by luck, really, when I got selected to go to MIT to study GIS, so it wasn't a, a deliberate decision, um, but in many ways... I think now that this this metaverse, so for those of you listening, I'm doing my quote unquote with my fingers, right? You know, this metaverse that we're talking about um, is really, isn't it like the realization of everything we've been working on for like the longest time? Um, um, so it's almost like the journey is happening on its own. So that's one. So the other angle is my kids. My two boys, so ages 9 and 14, poor guys, I bring them up in every one of my talks, but they're part of my life, especially in the pandemic, right? Because we lived, we actually lived together <laughs> day and night. And it's been interesting observing this generation. And as soon as I, you know, started to see what, you know, these guys are doing with their online uh, environments, and their, their notes, I said online environments, like not online games, 
it's truly online environments. I started to actually complain, you know, why us adults, professionals, were using Zoom and Google Docs and PowerPoints to collaborate. When I see my kids, you know, having almost you know, real life interactive experiences with their friends online in worlds that they build. So, uh, journey to the metaverse, you said, Patrick, I think it's, uh, it's like Rome, all roads lead to Rome, all roads lead to the metaverse. So here I am. I don't know. I like that. I like that. <laughs> okay. So tell us a little bit about OGC. I mean, OGC is about standards, uh, what do you think are the standards uh, that are currently managed by your consortium that are, you know, the most relevant for the metaverse, those virtual worlds? Um, so uh, this is uh, this is like a multi-layered uh, question, and I, I speak in layers and in Zoom levels because we're geospatial. You know, we're mapping people because I think the very first layer is. Uh, what is geospatial, <laughs> right? Uh, and um, so if we're talking about this uh, metaverse uh, being um, sort of an extension of the real world, right? And there's this cross we said between real and virtual, then everything is happening in space and time. And I think that's what geospatial is to me. Right? Is how do we represent everything that's happening in space and time? Uh, how do you encode uh, the satellite imagery that you use as a backdrop to your environment? How do you encode the buildings in 3D or any object? How do you encode these cars, these moving objects, um, the sensors? And how do these things interact with each other in the metaverse and in the real world? I don't care, right? So is it... Uh, you know, is this vehicle on this road and is it going to hit this other vehicle when they're going at this speed? Is this drone over this airspace? Is this aircraft intersecting this other, you know, airspace? Um, how about our people next to each other, right? The contact tracing part, which raised this visibility of, you know, location and geospatial. So, all of this is geospatial. Any map that you see anywhere is geospatial. So I'm just trying to, you know, set the um, the context. And um, so geospatial, if we say it's location, it's space and time and the relationships. And I emphasize, by the way, time because people don't catch on to the importance because you you guys are the experts. I think what, what I hear, the lowest hanging fruits of the value of the metaverse in the professional world, so not my kids' world, is, is this uh, running these simulations quickly and cheaply in the metaverse uh, so that you can make decisions in the real world. You know, miles of is driving cars, right, in the metaverse or... Uh, what I, I, I love this understanding uh, since COP26 is happening this week, understanding the impact of climate change policies, right, um, uh, on 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 your local, you know, just lifestyle. Um, so that's the ultimate killer app for the metaverse. So I did not answer your question. I know. So you asked about <laughs> standards. No, but I, I think it was important to, to, to take the time to establish that. You know, geospatial is not something we talk the most about. This is not kind of the, you know, the hottest topic when we talk about the metaverse, but it is going to be one of these foundational technology. And, you know, your, your, your tagline for the consortium is making location counts and knowing where things are and what things look like and having those layers of data on top of each other, which, as you pointed out, you know, using the graphics technology that we have and using AR technology, it's going to be much easier to consume that data with location based AR. You know, we can. So it's it's really important that people understand, you know, the, funda the foundational role that GIS data is going to play in, at least for the real world. You know, for tattooing and Pandora, we may we may have different solutions, but for planet Earth, uh, it's going to be absolutely foundational. Totally. But Mark, on on that note, I mean, you know, as we build more and more in the metaverse, I mean, does the the line between the physical and digital get more blurry? And does the line between geospatial and say simulation, does, does that blur? I mean, Nadine, what do you think? Uh, 
I think that's what we're aiming for. So when you say, I love, I think one of you earlier said community, right? That's what's, that's why we're all coming from different backgrounds to build, you know, again, I call it this metaverse, not the metaverse, because I really don't know how many and what it is. But that's totally the ultimate blurring of all boundaries, because the real life, it has no boundaries, right? And if we're modeling or if we're extending our real environments into the virtual, then it's totally blurring the lines. And to me, that's how we blur the lines. We're blurring them by collaborating, right? Uh, because it's it's multidiscipline just, you know, just because it is. <laughs> and then by, um, which is the piece that's close to our you know, mission at OGC by helping bring data, and we say any data, so that it integrates together, it works together, so that it creates, you know, it supports the simulation that you mentioned, Patrick. Cool. Mark, should we go back to your questions about the... <laughs> I totally derailed Mark. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, so, so we're talking about existing standards. So, you want you you, you want to maybe mention some of the the ones that are are relevant uh, for you know for the metaverse, yes. and then we can fast forward to the future a little bit, you know, and then we'll take a uh, take a look forward and say, you know, what what else do we need to do? So, let's talk about the exi the existing standards. All right, now we're talking. I'll focus. So here we go. I think um, so within the OGC, so that's the Open Geospatial Consortium, or sometimes I say the C is the community. The mission is uh, making geospatial or location, and for, you know, I say location because it's more relatable to people sometimes, but geospatial information, we call it FAIR, right? Findable accessible, interoperable, reusable. And so you do this, you know, from our perspective to make a data more integratable, which I don't even know if it's a word or not, but let's assume it's a word. So you do it with the glue, right? And the glue is those standards. And so where we're talking from the geospatial perspective, um, uh, the standards that come to mind, again, the low-hanging fruit uh, to create this foundation for, you know, this extension of our lives, uh, the 3D is the first thing that usually comes to mind, right? Because you're talking 3D, because life is 3D. So, um, and Patrick is more of an expert than me in this. So, the 3D tiles, right? So, how do you stream and render this massive 3D content, right? Because we're talking real world. I mean, we're going big with the metaverse in terms of scale and amount of data and what we want to do with it. So you got to have that standard to support it. Um, you put that aside and then you think about uh, what I see in OGC. There's another standard called the I3S, which is, you know, the scene layers. So how do you, again, package um, these large amounts of distributed, guess what, 3D data so for the mobile, for the web, right? Because we're going to be living, you know, we're going to interact with the metaverse, with our phones, with our goggles, with, you know, our Alexas. I don't know, right? We, like, literally, we don't know. And then um, I have this, like, list um, that I was looking earlier on the OGC website of all the models, right? Because we, we were, we're having to model, right, the real world. So uh, models for cities, that's the city GML um, uh, standards, you know, for, again, 3D virtual cities. You got indoor ML or indoor GML. Same thing. How do you model the indoors? Because we're not just talking about the outdoor spaces. There's the underground. We're working on, you know, an underground model because actually a lot of stuff is happening. That's a whole other podcast. Um, and then you got... Uh, the uh, uh, the easy stuff I call it the easy stuff because it applies you know to more than the metaverse the APIs so how do you how do you get maps how do you get 3D data how do you get tiles how do you get styles how do you get routes right for navigation uh, you've got the augmented reality markup language uh, uh, what's the new thing as well geopose which I'm not an expert in this but it has something to do with the position and orientation of objects with respect to so this honestly okay here's maybe here's why I went around the world with you Mark on this question because 
if everything is related to space and time, doesn't this mean that everything we're doing in OGC actually applies and I don't have to list the subset? <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think the, the question to me, you know, because we know that, you know, GIS, you know, it's, you know, governments are, I mean, if you look at the companies and the, 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 the uh, institution that support uh, OGC, I mean, these are all of our governments, big spatial agencies, you know, big corporations. So it's an established player now. So the question in my mind is, can you, you know, through your standards, so I'll, I'll make it personal to you, Nadine. Can you, with your standards, represent, you know, th the world out there? Do you, can, do you have the right scalability? Do you have the right granularity representation so that that could be actually one of the representation of, a, of a, you know, of the built environment and of everything else we do? So do you think that you guys have reached that point where, uh, you know, that, that is a viable place for us to invest with our data and it's going to be here to, uh, you know, to stay because, uh, you know, the metaverse is, is something that we want to build for, for a long time. So do you think we have reached this level of maturity? Oh, Mark, this is a tricky question. This is a trick question uh, because... Uh, it was not meant to be, though. <laughs> because I'm so tempted to say yes, right? A big yes. Okay. But, but, so yes, we have... Um, what is like GIS is 50 years old, right? As we celebrated this 50 years recently in a couple of years, OGC is 27 years old. So you got a huge foundation, foundation of knowledge of science, right? Um, you know, coordinate reference systems are not a joke, right? And uh, 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 the, the, the the GPS and the positioning. So there's, there's a lot of detail that people don't see when they see a map. So that part is is covered, but it's also changing because you know you should hear our standards officer talk about how Australia is shifting one meter every year, and it's this is us keeping up with those shifts to make sure that your buildings are where they are and you navigate and all of that. So, um, so you got you have a foundation of experience of tools and of uh, products and of knowledge and of people. But this is, I think, why the question is tricky. It's not enough, right? It's not enough because here we are, we're bringing, right, you know, you guys, especially you, you know, Mark and Patrick, you're bridging those worlds between, you know, geospatial and gaming. So there's the whole, I mean, I, I don't know, Hollywood does some amazing stuff with 3D. So you tell me what we're missing, right? Uh, and how do we bridge these worlds? But I think our power is exactly what you said, Mark, with geospatial because we have supported, right, government organizations in critical decisions, in safety critical decisions. I've been in aviation, right? And, you know, those standards and those technologies are actually what keeps your planes from not hitting each other in the space. And it's the same technology that, you know, uh, governments all around the world, they give maps to their soldiers on the mobile devices. That's us, right? So you got all of that, but you're pushing it to the next level. Right. And I think what's what we so we got a foundation. But when we talk metaverse, just like the real world, there's there are other puzzle pieces. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's it's, uh, you know, from our perspective and Patrick and I discuss discuss often about it. You know, we our goal is to, you know, for me, I'm an entertainment person. So I want to drop a camera in a geospatial data set and shoot a, a, a movie. OK, so I want that level. But I think. There is a whole new set of use cases where, uh, you know, from when every one of our objects, drones, uh, vehicles, cameras have, have computer vision cameras on them, you know, we, we have to, we're going to have to train those, uh, those objects. And so we need, uh, we need a representation of the world that is, that works for those sensors, you know, from, from a human height, not from, a, so we, from a plane, we're, we're good. So, uh, you know, so solving that quality at street level, I think it's probably the next frontier. And so we can talk about the capture of that data. But I think before we talk about this, you know, do you think, you know, you think we can represent it? If we were to, to capture, we're able to capture the data, 
Are we confident that the geospatial industry can actually handle it? I think you got the expert group, the global expert group who, yes, you know, that part I'm confident about uh, because I, I see our value as um, we accelerate what we are trying to do, right? Because we know how to do it. So that part I'll say yes. Not, not a trick. Look, I'm convinced of it, but I want you to say it. <laughs> 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 I, I, I declare that I agree with Mark that the geospatial community uh, has, has a lot to offer. Uh, operational, tested, at scale, um, and I honestly, I'm not just saying this, you have a community who wants to do this because we want to get out of the bubble. It's it, uh, So this is such an amazing timing when, when the pieces are coming together. So, yes. So if we could go a little bit on this tangent from the standards, you know, I always talk about, you know, it would be a dream to have a Fortnite-like experience, but with a a capture of Philadelphia, a capture of New York City, but modeled down to that detail, the way you interact with it in Fortnite, right? So, so Nadina, I'd love to hear, you know, from a data capture perspective, you know, how, how you see that unfolding. Uh, so that's, um, I, I'm trying to think because um, one thing that's for sure, we have uh, so many new ways of getting the data, of capturing the data, right? I think everybody's following all the space companies and the specs and and then you got the AI that, you know, so when you have data from space to what, like 10 centimeter level, you can actually get your 3D and more. You got the whole internet of things, right? The sensors uh, capturing um, that information, like you said, from cars, from our phones, from any wearable device. Um, and then you got the whole crowdsourced part. So I think I think our problem, honestly, is um, keeping up with that data, right? And making sure that actually it works together. Um, because I, I, I mean, I see data like everywhere you go. There's just data, data, data. But at the same time, I hate to bring this up but and depress people, but you look at any disaster, right? You know, flooding, wildfires, and I'm not talking, I'm talking in developing, you know, in the developed world, right? And we still don't find the data that we need and we cannot access it and all of this. So we have the means to capture, we have the representations, we, we need to keep at it. I mean, I know OGC is working with the, like the discrete global grid and the new reference systems and this GeoPost thing. Um, we just need to get better at bringing this data together. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a lot of different data sources and then the ability to, to fuse and then coherently stream, stream that out. It, it's super important. Uh, so, so Dina, I'm, you know, I, look, I, I loved your statement that, hey, all OGC standards are relevant to the metaverse. I think that's a great, a great perspective. And then, you know, I do believe as, as the metaverse advances that, that there are going to be new standards, right, that are going to be necessary on, on, on many fronts. Uh, and, and I love a pragmatic approach uh, to developing standards and promoting right, an open and interoperable ecosystem. And, and I believe OGC has some interesting tracks, such as the community standard track. So I would love if you could share a bit about your your perspective on kind of pragmatic standards standards development, developing them quickly, but also not developing them too quickly. Yeah. Be really interesting. Yeah. So I would echo Mark what he said uh, earlier. Uh, maybe not on this call, but I know Mark said it at some point uh, that we have um, we're building something bigger, right, than any of us, and this is like truly a unique opportunity for all of us here. So we need to make sure, again, that the pieces fit. Um, and we go back to standards. And if we're building the metaverse, then it's standards for so many things. Um, and it's not just the metaverse that's moving quickly. Everything is moving quickly. So we do have that challenge of how do I get a standard fast enough, but you know, mature enough. And I think we're doing a few things. And again, you guys, and I, you know, it's not Patrick and Mark, but everybody who's listening, you know, you, you have to let us know if we're on the right track. So uh, things like, um, uh, I think we're doing a few things in OGC. One is uh, the development process for the standard itself, right? We're making it just way more agile. So the standard is not 
this document that's built by a committee, but it's more, uh, you know, it's by developers for developers, we're calling it. So it's from the ground up. So yeah. I, I like, like that. that too. And it becomes that um, uh, the standard really becomes the documentation of something that works and that people have agreed on already. And then it's usable. You know, that's how it's quick. And I think um, by involving the community this early on, you, you know, they catch up together, right, on, on the changes. Um, uh, the other one is, of course, what you mentioned, Patrick, about the community standard, which is just realizing that there's so much that we need to do, right, and that these standards can come in from everywhere. Because we, we may be the, the experts, we are the experts at geospatial, but we're not the experts at every domain on Earth, right? Especially when we say geospatial is everywhere. So these standards, to, to actually, you know, solve any problem, you're going to need different ones. So sometimes they come from a community. Uh, a good example, so Patrick can talk a little bit more about the... See, now I have to interview you. Uh, so, uh, so Patrick can talk more about the 3D, uh, right? The 3D tiles. Uh, the other example was the uh, the IMDF, the, in, uh, the uh, indoor mapping format, data format from Apple. Same thing. So, uh, and that's developed by a community, uh, not necessarily the geospatial community, right? It's developed by a community that's geospatial related and then tested, implemented, right? It's not, you know, it's not an idea. And then it comes mature. And I think this is how you balance, right? Quick versus mature. And the last point I need to say is collaboration, collaboration. And I think OGC is very good at this. We have to collaborate. That's why I'm happy, you know, in the SIGGRAPH event, we had Kronos. We collaborate with W3C. We collaborate with the AR Cloud because you, you have to. If we're saying geospatial is everywhere, we got to talk to everybody. Does that, you know, answer maybe? <laughs> it does. I think it's spot, spot on. So do we want to talk about future standards, Patrick? Or have we covered that already? I think we covered it pretty well. Nadine? Yeah. I mean, again, this is when I have to ask you, but, uh, you know, I'll give you a pass. I think uh, we, we have, uh, we're sp- we're scratching the surface on the 3D, and I know, Patrick, you're releasing the 3D tiles next. I don't know if you want to say a few words about that. <laughs> uh, um, but also, I think we're scratching the surface on the AR, VR, right? We're also scratching the surface on what we call GeoAI, right? So the artificial intelligence. Um, I, I have a list, yeah. Uh, so there's, and this is where I need to hear more from people, honestly. And I think the other part, you know, that's uh, interesting because you mentioned gaming and geospatial, and it may not be obvious for people, say, what's, what's the intersection of gaming and, and, uh, and geospatial is, I think, the way to think about it is, you know, game engine gives the geospatial people a, a presentation layer, a way to, to present the data that makes more sense, you know, of all of those data because we have interactivity, you know, we can implement those layers and, and we've had a lot of graphics for the past 25 years, but I think, you know, a game engine is the ultimate form of commoditized graphics. It's, a, you know, at the level of performance and the level of visual fidelity that makes the consumption of that very, very complex data set. Now, obvious, you know, we, We've seen digital twins of entire cities like Wellington, and now you can navigate and and you know navigate to the place and you know display the data that you need. So this concept of digital twin powered by GIS data actually, uh, I think it's very powerful, and that's, that's that's a bit of a game changer. It's not disruption in and of itself, but it's it's the fact that that graphics power you know is is packaged with the game engine with the kind of features that needs, and it's widely available on the hardware that's widely available, like phones can run game engines and the cloud can run a game engine. So I think that's, you know, that, that intersection is what, what we have this perceived acceleration, you know, uh, around GIS, but it's just that we can, it has become easier to consume that data and the complexity of that data that you mentioned earlier. So. Yeah. If, uh, if people could see us right now, we're actually we're all nodding heads because that, you know, it's, mm-hmm. you bring it up together very nicely and at the same time it takes me back to how we started this podcast like when we talk about digital twins i feel like we've always have 
talked or wanted to do the digital twins, but now we can. We can. We actually can, right? You can show them. Yes. You can display them in a way exactly. that any human will understand them. I think yes. yeah, that's, that's... All right. Yeah, before we were crazy, and now people are seeing why we're so passionate about what we do. <laughs> Uh, you know, I have to say the geospatial community is a great community of, of passionate people. And, you know, you can see in the sense they've, they've been doing important stuff, but they haven't seen, you know, they haven't been in the spotlight yet. But I think with, with the metaverse and with, the, and we were discussing earlier how mapping is going to be a very important discipline because, you know, laying things on a map is a great way to access any form of data. Actually, it could be, uh, it could become one of the primary interfaces. So you guys are, uh, have, a, you know, an important future ahead of you. Yeah, I say, uh, yeah, we're we're in the right place at the right time. And I'm going to quote you, Mark, uh, what you mentioned earlier in another call. But Mark said something that I wrote down, that the map is the interface, right, to everything. And that's that's exactly why we're here. Mark, do you have any uh, surprise questions before we wrap up? No, I, I, I've already... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so, so Nadine, we covered a, we covered a lot of ground today. No, no pun intended. Um, anything we didn't talk about that you wish we did? Oh, um, I do actually. I do have two topics, and you know, uh, I'll be very quick because one thing. Uh, is uh, the ethics part, the ethical use um, um, of of the geospatial data, or, or maybe any uh, any data? I think it's a it's a big topic. That's again another podcast by itself. And the other one, it's maybe a question back to the community. Um, uh, Real Player One, or what was it? Ready Player One, that movie. My kids made me watch it when it first came out. And when I talk about the metaverse. You know, usually the reaction is like, you know, is this is this it? And I just really, really, really hope that it's not it. And I think part of what we need to talk about is it's not it. So talking about the the use cases and the value of the metaverse in a positive light and the applications. And I think um, I, it matters to me it, bringing it back uh, to the, your first question about the journey as a professional and a you know future user of the metaverse, but also as a mom. <laughs> Um, so these are the two topics which I think, uh, again, as we build this community for the open metaverse, we need to keep in mind. Uh, Patrick, I did say one question for an eventual future podcast. Is, <laughs> it's about the ownership of the data, which is a rat hole I didn't want us to go in today, but one day we're going to have to tackle this one. You know, when you fly drones over cities and capture buildings and, you know, who wants the data? It's for another yes, episode. And, and the licensing of it right now is is very fragmented and very different from yeah. yes. captured capture. Absolutely. Yes. Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> but be careful. Maybe you invite you again. <laughs> so any, any organization or person that you think we should, uh, you want to give a shout out to today? Oh, my God. I'm going to laugh out loud right now. I, I apologize to all the listeners because... I swear I'm not doing it because I'm this on this podcast and I would urge anybody to hear me, you know, in any other talk. I usually give kudos to you guys. I give uh, always kudos to CZM and Patrick's team. Um, wow, thank so you're you. like amazing champions of geospatial, you know, um, and the geospatial evolution. And I always give, uh, I always mention this collaboration, CZM Epic Games, right? Because you guys are genuine community builders. You're helping many people bridge their expertise and um, you always talk about openness and interoperability, which just gives me hope. So I'm really not saying this because I'm on this podcast. I seriously always give kudos to you guys because you're exemplars of collaboration and experimentation and interoperability. Well, thank you. I think you, what, what you're showing there is you, you're a poor judge of character. <laughs> 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 thank you. It's, it's, it's nice. But I mean it, though. Yeah, so, yeah, I really, I, I okay, really mean you. it, yeah. Well, Nadine, it was great having you with us today. Uh, you know, Nadine from the uh, Open Your Social Consortium. People making location count, you know, people that are doing very important work for the metaverse behind the scene and 
Hopefully we get to talk to you again on, on other topics. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me again. This was a lot of fun and I hope others enjoy it as well. Well, so thanks, we want to thank our audience, Patrick. I think, you know, we, we launched the podcast publicly and we've got some great, some great feedback. So we want to thank you. All the listeners, tell us what you like, what you don't like. You know, we're doing this because we're passionate about it. We're not pros about it. We do our best. And so we're very open to feedback. And uh, I've, I've seen a few videos on YouTube when you say, hit the subscribe button. It's the same for us. Now we have to use that famous <laughs> sentence. Please subscribe, rate, review, tell us something. Uh, we want to hear about you and any ideas about topics we would like to cover on the podcast is absolutely welcome. So again, we're here to showcase, uh, you know, we're technology showcasing other technologists. It's nerdy by design and uh, hopefully everybody enjoys it. Well said. So with this, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Nadine. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.